Um, here we have it again. First Tuesday. Why did I do that? First Tuesday of the month uh, and last Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And we always get some really cool people to come in. And i got a really cool cat today. Um, I can see some people, but no one's actually speaking to me. So do me a favor, as I've already told you, follow the instructions. Say something in here so I know you're here and I know it's connecting okay. I'm going to be introducing you in a few seconds to a gentleman. And I can say this now because um, he's not on. And therefore, it would be embarrassing if he was on. I've known this cat for, I think it must be seven years or something and we've got up to some shenanigans we've hung out at cool underground jazz bars in new york the guy is so dapper um he makes me look good just by me standing near him just by uh basically being in his in his world we've hung out uh backstage with andrea bocelli in poland um he has he is the creative genius behind everything from ralph Lauren, gucci macy's victoria's secrets the guy is connected, uh, but more than anything, he's a creative genius. Now, I had him as one of our surprise guests at uh, New York Speakeasy, and he was in there to tell you about how to create a story, how to create a flow. And with so many people today relying on videos um, to get that word out there, I don't know anyone that's more creatively uh, um, set as the pinnacle man as this guy that I am proud to call my friend. So... I'm going to bring uh, Jeff Madoff in. Uh, loads of people saying loud and clear, good. Um, I'm going to bring in someone that just uh, makes me look good. Hang on one second. Jeffrey, good morning. Good. Well, it's good afternoon. I'm here in New York City where it's 1.32, but good morning to you. Great. Start picking on me already. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> that. All right. So this is uh, welcome to First Tuesday. Welcome to... Uh, my people, uh, welcome to the tribe, the community. Uh, it's actually, honestly, an honor to have you come on. You joined us as a, as a little surprise. You jumped on to one of our um, virtual happy hours the other day. Um, yeah. And then I had a bunch of people uh, Googling you afterwards, and they were like, I can't believe you joined us for the virtual. So thanks a lot for that. But more than anything, thank you for giving us the time that you have today. Now, you're actually, uh, you lecture at... Um, What's the, what's the college in New York that you lecture at? Parsons School for Design, which is part uh, of the new school, and Parsons is the design school. All right. So you, you're lecturing in, in, in academia of what you do, and you are incredibly good at it. What are you, first of all, and I've got loads of questions that we're going to go into, but what do you think about everyone using video today? Do you think they should? Do you think they shouldn't? Uh, you know, what's your opinion on people using video for that brand in the marketing? Well, I think that, you know, it, it depends. If you are a business, if you're an individual, you know, what is your end game? What are you hoping to do? Video, as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words and video is 30 frames a second. So you can do the math. Look how many words you can fit into just a second. Uh, so video can be an incredibly effective storytelling tool. But I think that one of the problems is, is that people somehow assume that everyone is tremendously interested in what they're doing every moment of the day. So I think before you open your mouth or take out your camera, have something to say that's of value to people. Otherwise, it's just, you know, kind of a narcissism. I've often, I've often said that just because your camera can shoot video doesn't mean that it should. That's so right. You've got to That's realize right. that. And there's, there's a couple of things. People are embarrassed about how they look on video, and we'll go into the authenticity and being real about that in a second. But the key element there is if you don't have anything to add to somebody else's life and world, then why are you doing it? But I'm amazed at how many do it for vanity metrics. Well, that's right. And, and you know, I've, I've often thought, and I've talked about this in my class, is what if we behaved in real life like we behave online? So if I approached you on the street and said, hey, Steve, take a look at this picture of what I just had for lunch. Like, what? what? No, take a look at this picture. I just, I just had this for lunch. I wanted you to see it. Why in the hell do I want to see what you had for lunch or dinner or breakfast or drank or whatever? And, you know, well, could you give me a thumbs up? You like it? What? 
do you like it? You need approval for what you had for lunch for me. Is that what you're saying? So I think that there, we have gone so far in the other direction that assuming that everything we do is so precious and worth telling everybody else that I think being more discreet in what you tell people and how you use it to me is a much better way of using it. Now you've actually got a book that has just hit and I'm going to give it a quick plug now. Um, and we'll put a link in below. Um, you've actually had your book just hit number one under creative. Uh, what's the name of the book? And it's on Amazon, but what's the name of the book? The book is the same name as my class, which is creative careers, making a living with your ideas. And what would we find in that book? So what you'll find in the book is actually a whole lot of different kinds of information. So first I'm going to tell you what you won't find. You won't find a recipe for success because uh, those don't work. You know, uh, what works is learning from good people, experiencing things, using critical thinking. And, you know, everybody's path is slightly different. And those the difference in the path is what makes you distinctive. And, you know, nobody can give you those seven, eight, nine, ten steps to success. I call that the myth of replication. If I do exactly what that other person did, I'll be that successful. And it's impossible to do that anyhow. So I think the book takes you through uh, different steps, whether you're looking to start a business, whether you're looking to pivot a, your career, whether you're looking to engage in creative collaborations, all of these things. And you hear from a number of people who don't always agree, but who will put out well thought out ideas. And then you start figuring out what resonates with you and what do you want to try and what can you take from these people? So it's a great banquet of information from a lot of really smart people that have done a lot of good things and they've done it differently. Banquet of information. I am going to try and slide that into a conversation someday. <laughs> it's just, it's just very good. It could make me sound eloquent and cool. All right. So, um, all right. So there's the book. We're going to put the link in below. Um, but I want to be able to use the genius that I've got in front of me to actually help people with what they're doing. We actually put out uh, last week that you were coming on board and I have a pretty decent sizzle reel, your sizzle reel. And if you haven't seen it, go back and look on the, on the, in fact, I'll post it again, but his sizzle reel has everything from Hermes to Victoria's Secret models jumping up and down to Ralph Lauren, uh, uh, models jumping around. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just ridiculous. The kind of stuff that you've got up to ridiculous is a, is the word, but I told everyone that if anyone knows how to get your message out via video, it's you. And we had uh, Petronella is a up and coming photographer, real good stuff. You know, if you haven't looked up Petronella, you should. Anyone in Speakeasy, you know, we're going to exchange IG profiles very soon. So you'll be able to see how quality she is. But she actually came up with about seven really good questions, which everyone then hid behind and went, these are the best questions. Please ask these questions. So I have to, I have some questions for you that we can jump in with quicker. You're all right with that? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Um, she wanted to understand what do you need, what do you do to get the person on the other side of the video? So she's talking now being behind the camera, mm -hmm. but if you've got someone that's going to be working for you, given a bio, given a, a referral, saying something about your brand, you, your product, how do you get them comfortable and safe in order to really to be able to express a full passion of what they think of you? And are you saying that if they're in front of the camera, if I'm interviewing them or something like that? No, you're going to somebody and getting them to say something about your product. So you're behind the camera. So it's me. I've picked up my cell phone and I want you to say something nice about me. How mm -hmm. do I get you safe and comfortable to fully express it without it sounding too close? Well, I'm really impressed with this product. How do you get them safe and happy and comfortable? Well, First of all, you demonstrate that 